In this lesson, we're going to have a look at the graph of the derivative of a function and what information we can gather from this graph about the original function as well as the derivative of the function. When we have a look at the graph of the derivative of a function, the most important thing to remember is that the derivative shows the value of the gradient of the original function. In the sketch, we have a green curve, that's a cubic graph, and on that cubic graph at A, we've drawn a tangent. This tangent's gradient is a very big positive gradient at the moment, and that is indicated by the B value at the top. So at the moment, that tangent has a gradient of 20. As I move point A, the gradient of the tangent will become smaller and smaller, and that you will also be able to see from point B that is moving down and showing a smaller value for the gradient. As I move on this curve, the gradient becomes smaller and smaller, and when I reach my turning point or stationary point, the gradient is zero. That can be seen looking at the B value that is across a Y value of zero. As I now continue to move point A, the gradient will become negative, and that will also be seen in the blue curve, the gradient curve, as B is now below the x-axis where all the y values are negative. In between the two stationary points of our green curve, we have our inflection point, and that is the point where the concavity of the graph is changing. And this happens when the second derivative is equal to zero, which is where our blue curve will have its turning point. The blue curve's gradient here will be zero. As I continue moving point A, the gradient is still negative, but is becoming less negative up to the stationary point where this gradient is zero. And that is why the blue curve is now on zero. As I move past this stationary point, the gradient changes to positive again, and the B value becomes more and more positive. So let's have a look at what different calculations tell us about these two graphs. If we have a look at the calculation fx equal to zero, we know that that is where for the green curve, we calculate the x-intercepts. This calculation, however, doesn't tell us anything about the derivative. The next calculation we can do is to determine the derivative and putting it equal to zero. This calculation will give us the x values of the stationary points or turning points of our green function. And because it is the blue function that we are putting equal to zero, we are calculating the derivative function's x-intercepts. On the sketch, you can see that the x-intercept of the blue function at one also indicates the stationary point of the green function. And the same thing happens at the second x-intercept of the blue graph. When we now calculate the derivative and where it is bigger than zero, we are calculating for the original function where the gradient is positive, meaning where this graph is increasing. If we are determining where the derivative is bigger than zero for the graph of the derivative itself, we are determining where the graph is above the x-axis. And if we have a look at the sketch, where our green graph is increasing, our blue graph is above the x-axis, and the same for the second part, where the green graph is increasing, our blue graph is above the x-axis. And then of course the opposite is also true, so when we determine the derivative and where it is smaller than zero, for the original function we are determining where it is decreasing, because the gradient is negative. And for the graph of the derivative itself, we are determining where it is below the x-axis. So on the sketch, the green function is decreasing between 1 and 3, and that is also where the blue graph is below the x-axis. Lastly, we can determine the second derivative and put it equal to 0, and for the original function, this will determine the inflection point, and this also shows the first derivative function's turning point. On our sketch, the inflection point of the green graph is at 2, and that is also the turning point of our derivative graph. So we can now give you either of the two graphs and ask you questions about 
any of the two functions and you should be able to switch between the two graphs. Let's have a look at an example. Example, in the sketch is the graph of the derivative. What is the gradient of the tangent to f at x is equal to zero? Here you need to remember that the derivative indicates the gradient of f. So if we need to determine the gradient of f at x is equal to zero, it means we need to calculate f prime x where x is zero. We have been given the graph of f prime x, so all we need to do is determine what the y value is when x is zero, and here we can see that that is minus four. So the gradient of the tangent of f at x is zero will be minus four. Question two. Give the x values of the stationary points of f. If you understood the table, it is now easy to say that the stationary points of f are indicated by the x-intercept of the derivatives graph. So because we were given the graph of the derivative, we are going to focus on its x-intercepts, and they will indicate the stationary points of f. So therefore the x values of the stationary points of f are at minus 3 and x equal 1. Question 3. What is the x value of the inflection point of f? From our table we now know that the inflection point of f has the same x value as the turning point of the derivative. And on our graph for the derivative we are then going to focus on its turning point. This turning point lies exactly in the middle of the two x-intercepts, so we can determine it by adding up the two x-intercepts and dividing by 2. So that will give us an x-value of minus 1. So the derivative's turning point is at an x-value of minus 1. So this means that the x-value of the function's inflection point is also minus 1. Question 4. For which values of x is f increasing? And again, the table helps us to know that f is increasing when the derivative is above the x-axis. So if we have a look at the graph of the derivative, we can see that it is above the x-axis for all x values smaller than minus 3. And it's again above the x-axis for all x values bigger than 1. And these are then also the x values where f is increasing. So our answer for question 4 will be all x values smaller than minus 3 or all the x values bigger than 1. Question 5. Draw a rough sketch of f if f of 0 is bigger than 0. This extra part of information given, f of 0, means that we are changing the x value to 0. And we do that when we want to calculate the y-intercept. This piece of information then actually tells us that the y-intercept is positive. When drawing a cubic function, we always want to indicate the y-intercept, the x-intercept, stationary points, and inflection point. But here we are asked to draw a rough sketch, so that means that some of the information may not be given. So we already know that the y-intercept is positive but we cannot determine the x-intercepts if all we have is information on the derivative. We can, however, determine the stationary points by looking at the x-intercepts of our derivative. So we've already mentioned that the stationary points will then be at x is minus 3 and again at x is 1. We also know that the inflection point is at the turning point of our given function and we've already mentioned that that will be at x is minus 1. And all that's left to do now is to determine the form of this function. For this, it will help to know where the graph is increasing and where it is decreasing. And we've already mentioned that this graph is increasing for all x values smaller than minus 3, and again for x values bigger than 1. So this means that this graph starts increasing decreases and increases again at the end. So now we have the form of our graph. So when I now go and draw the graph, I need to ensure that it has a positive y-intercept, 
with a stationary point to the left and right of that y-intercept. So I'm going to start bottom left, have a turning point, positive y-intercept and another turning point and increase. So here we have a first stationary point at minus 3, an inflection point at minus 1, positive y-intercept, another stationary point at 1 and here we have our rough sketch.